Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to the Alright Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, it's not the worst podcast, it's just the Alright Podcast. So, um, we're back with another one, and as you notice, it's on Spotify. It is, um, basically, you know, there's none video now at the moment, but we will get back up and running on that eventually. Um, but this week, I have on a guest, and it's just not any guest. I know this person. Um, about three years now, four years, I'd say. Yeah, see, I told her not to talk, and she's not talking, she's just shaking her head, lovely. Um, so yeah, as it is a Spotify audio podcast, um, you know, it's very hard to see us. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get straight into it, guys. Um, check out all the other previous um, episodes up on Spotify and YouTube, the RE podcast. We're going to get into it now. So I am joined by Hannah. Hello, Hannah, you can talk now. Hi, Anthony. <laughs> hello, hello. So, um, for people who don't know who you are, please introduce yourself and why you're here today. Right, so my name's Hannah Selsey. I am from Dublin and I have a very big interest in cars. I've grew up around cars. My dad's a mechanic, both trucks and cars. So, you could call me a baby apprentice that would press the pedals when he needed to. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but there was always this stigma about girls being in into cars and working around cars. So for a very long time, I kind of pressed that down and was like, no, it's not for me. Um, But I've recently decided, you know what, just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I can't succeed in motorsport and cars. Mm. So I've been working on that. Yeah, I I remember now. So obviously for people that don't know, which is probably anybody that's listened to this unless you're the Curry's gang. Um, Me and Hannah actually first met in Curry's. I remember coming in and... um, not knowing what to do and I remember going over to the fridge section with all the ovens and going over to you and you were on the computer and you were telling me to do things but I bossing would say around. yeah boss no <laughs> I would I'd use that word bossing me around um because I would ask and you'd be like it's this way it's that way but you do it like it'd be, it wouldn't be bad to be a friendly kind of way me no it wasn't mean <laughs> but to some things I'd ask stupid questions and you'd give me kind of are you for real um and types of that so no that's the first time we ever met and then we kind of you know um throughout work um we we got um you know close anyway because you know if there was anything with yourself uh back then you'd you'd come and you'd say it to me to get me and i'd say the same to you um but yeah basically that's how me and hannah met but i remember i don't know it, it was early on when me and you were talking uh inquiries that you told me that your dad was a mechanic and that you were really interested in cars so when I saw the Instagram post of you going over there, I asked asked Nicola after this. I went yes, and she, Nicola was like what? And I goes she done it, and she's like what do you mean? She told me ages ago she wants to get into cars. Like I I said that to her like, and I goes she wants to get into cars, and I was like why don't you? And you're like ah oh, I will one day, and so. But a lot of people that say they want to do stuff and don't, you know, so they don't. So you're actually you're you're doing it. You get me? So I I admire people that um go out of the you know go away their own time you know and 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 go and learn that craft you know yourself with the likes of the business i do as well there's a lot of people that say they want to do things and they don't so you're one of them people that they'll do and you'll do it do you get me so i have a lot of respect for people like yourself that would go out and do it thanks um, anthony no worries no worries <laughs> um without getting too cheesy um but yeah um so i asked could you come in here today because i'd love to learn now you know me I have not. I don't know about cars. I don't have anything. Where's the engine? It's in the front. I don't. The engine's in the not front. Not always. Not not always. And I didn't know that. Do you get me? So, um, please start off, um, telling me, um, how the process went when you actually said to yourself, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start going and doing this. So you you start explaining to us or the audience here what made you what made that decision happen. Ooh. See, it's kind of a long term coming um, because it started with the pandemic. I had gotten my car that all I use kept calling the Red Rocket back in. The case. Red Rocket? <laughs> yeah. My little Peugeot. Yeah. Um, and I was driving around after I got my license and all was well and good, but I was just getting a bit, it wasn't fast enough. It wasn't done up enough. Um, and then the pandemic hit mm. and I was terrified and excuse me for the first while i was just like i'm bored like i just couldn't stay home Mm. so i started doing deliveries for domino's and so i was driving all the time Mm. as a job so then it got to this point where i was like right i was meeting new people and there was a few nicer cars there 
Um, that's actually how I met my boyfriend. Right. He had a really nice car. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, but then I kind of got interested in it and then I just started changing radios in the car from the normal radio to the screen radio. Then I sold the Peugeot and I got a Golf. Mm. And then when it got to the Golf, I think the pandemic was over by that point. And... I got into the car scene um, mm. you know, I went, started going to meets, started going to events, seeing all the other done up cars. And I was like, well, I can do that too. Mm. So slowly the golf started getting done up. Mm. Um, it wasn't anything special, like just a few lights here and there. So it wasn't technically done up, but mm. I got a subwoofer in it. Nice, lovely. The sound on that was immense. Yeah. Um, that ended up getting sold as well. Radio, <laughs> radio. Um, and I got my Mitsubishi Lancer. And that was already pretty done up. But mm. then people started noticing. They're like, oh, that's Hannah's car. Oh, that's Hannah's car. Honest. But now I have the GT86. Mm. And I get waved down all the time. And it's not got a lot done to it. But I've got big plans for it. Mm. But the car scene, you just go and you look at every other person's done up car. And you're just like, oh, my God, the amount of time and effort that went into mm. that. Well done to them. Mm. Like, even if it's not your style of car, you can still appreciate that that's their dream car and that's mm. what they want to do so you still appreciate it either way yeah I like when you were talking there about the different cars and how like it's a, pro- a progress basically you, you can't just start out unless you know you're minted uh, you can't start out with just you know this uh, brand new car that everybody admires and so you, you do have to kind of build up because I think me personally like I wouldn't be into cars myself now um, I uh, and the likes of that but I do admire someone that likes learning, uh, learn about cars and uh, and so like that, and learning their craft. Um, but the whole progress of um, I'd say you appreciate it more knowing that you had to work for that because if you were just given that, you wouldn't have. Do you get me? You wouldn't have appreciated that as much as you would now, knowing that you put a lot of hard work and effort into that and your little subwoofer and all and the lights. See, if I if I heard that now. And then just seeing the lights, I'd be like, that's a Wapa car. Do you get me? But you'd be like, mm, yeah, but there's, there's ones out there. And I'd be like, ah, oh, no, 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 it's it, it's still good. But the car you have now, you pulled up in the car. And uh, I was like, fucking hell. Like, do you ever watch Cars? And do you ever see the little the little crew in Cars? And they're like, and they're going through everywhere. That's what I pictured. I literally pictured you just with a little crew going through. I don't know why. Um, But yeah, you could hear it before you could see it. And... um. I want to ask as well, with the likes of that car and the noise and stuff like that as well, um, do you be stopped a lot with that now? It's completely road legal, so the guards can't say anything to me because yeah. it's just it's road legal. Like I've yeah. got tax insurance and everything like that. So, um, for for someone out there that wants to get into, mm-hmm. um, doing what you do in the car scene and so, what what advice would you give them? Like if like a no no. What what would be a no no to kind of go right? You can't do that to your car because you could be taken off your or blah blah blah. I mean the list is endless, but some people still do it and get away with it. Right, like it all just depends on your look as well. Yeah. Um, but it's all up to the extent of insurance. Mm. I mean that's the end of it. If you can find a really good insurance that you can declare your modifications to, you're doing really well. Most mm. insurances will just turn you down and be like, no, you can't change that. You can't change that. Mm. so at the end of the day it's not really about what makes the car road legal mm. it's about insurance it's about insurance right so you hear it here first it just get onto the right insurance it, would you recommend any insurance companies out there at the moment um, maybe we're not allowed to talk about them so um, I'm, I'm just gonna do you know what just in case I, I won't get you to say it um, but yeah um yeah, so talk to me about the, the the car scene. You were saying, um, now I don't want to get into it if you don't want it. Uh, your boyfriend, you met your boyfriend and that. So, um, it's I've never seen um the Fast and Furious, right? And yeah, now listen, right? I'm a typical person that goes, oh, Fast and Furious, oh, car scenes, like blah blah blah. And I can see from your facial expression, you're like, no, nothing like that at all, right? So, what what was it like when you first entered into that type of scene and you went to your first event? Not gonna lie, kind of was like Fast and Furious, oh, <laughs> but yes. the first one, not the, yeah, the yeah, new yeah. ones with the Robin Banks or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. None of that. Where still. they're trying to jump off cliffs and he kind of just hangs around and no, glides like and stuff. No, like it's a big, massive community where a bunch of people who are enthusiastic about cars meet up, park up their cars, and show their pride and joy, and you just admire other people's work. Mm. Like it's it's not. It's like another form of art or something, isn't it? Yeah, like you just park up and admire, or you'll go down to car parks and do stuff like yeah. it's it's just a matter of 
a community and you really feel it like mm. it's like the Fast and Furious when they're all grouped together and mm. they, they do things together that's we support each other yeah. um, you know there, there's always the bad egg that's a bit petty or mm. sad but mm. that's that's life like there's always going to be that one person or that yeah. one group but it's still at the end of the day you're all there for the same reason you all have the interest and love and enthusiasm for cars yeah so and you can, it's like like think of it in this way you can put it in this way as well like if you went to an art gallery and you've seen paintings and you're going around admiring everybody's painting and if you might you might not like you you go oh i don't like that artist um but this painting here that they've done is really nice look at the detail and look how much time spent it's literally like that so when you just go around you are looking at each painting or each car do you get me and it's like a little gallery that you all meet up in, in a spot now um obviously i don't know much about um the scene itself at all really um so what's it like um organizing events and meetups and what was it like what what feeling did you have um going to your first ever one my first one i was nervous because i didn't know what to expect but organizing them i mean it takes a lot out of the person who's organizing it right. but once it's out there it's out there like so i'm currently with a car club mm. um they're called night chasers but we'll set up an event we'll make a poster or we'll make a TikTok and then we'll send it out and then whoever wants to come along comes along mm. and nine times out of ten it's a full car park yeah so it's something to do yeah like there there's always that group that go out drinking on the fridays and saturdays mm. we're, we're the group that go and park somewhere on a friday uh, and yeah, saturday yeah. And, and and you st- you don't seem like you are doing any harm whatsoever i don't i don't get that kind of vibe um there's from, a lot of this. stigma about the car scene that we're dangerous or that we're boy racers or girl racers yeah. and we're just being dangerous like don't get me wrong i'm sure there's the the overconfident people that are causing harm yeah but i've never personally met them yeah um and and we try to be responsible about it like yeah. we, we're not putting anybody else in in harm's way like if we're in a car park we're in a car park yeah like we're not doing any harm to anybody yeah. no it, you're literally just you're parking there and you're going around as i said like a gallery is going around talking to each other it's a it's a nice way of meeting up i'd i'd rather spend my time or a saturday night with uh, a group of your people that's what i'm gonna call it your people <laughs> and then people that go out and drink and go to nightclubs I, I i hate that i despise it. i don't like drink i don't like people getting drunk and getting rowdy i don't like it whatsoever and one thing i know exactly if i went out into that type of scene and kind of had a look at it um i'd know that right at the end of the night everybody isn't drunk everybody's safe everybody's had a good time and everybody's just gonna get home safe like to the to a certain extent you get me i mean nobody's drinking because they've all got to drive no that's what i'm saying like <laughs> there's no way you can't even drink unless there is someone out there that goes come here look i'm even better dr- when i'm drunk or something when I'm driving um but yeah when when you start going into more of the car scenes when was your first time you actually were you asked or did you volunteer to organize an event no I haven't organised an event yet. Yeah. Um, and I don't plan to. No. Um, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate at the moment. Yeah. And I'm kind of happy with other people organising the meets and I can just show up. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of stuff going on with Formula Woman going on at the moment. So mm. I'm I'm unfortunately far too busy. Yeah. I, w- I was literally going to sw- segue into that and thank God you've done that as well. Um, because, yeah, you... Now, I don't know how this came about. So please let us now anyway and the people listening how did you get involved with that the f1 right so formula woman is basically a competition where they look for novice female drivers and they want to find if you've got natural talent and how quickly you can learn to drive really fast cars around a racetrack and the top six get to drive in the british gt cup next year in the mclarens Hmm. so how I started, I was just already in the car scene and I was just on Instagram and it came up as an ad actually. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I kind of searched through it and I looked through their website and I was like, geez, this look, this literally looks like something I could do because yeah. there's not a lot of females in motorsport. Mm. It is a very male dominated sport and it isn't fair. Mm. So when I seen that, I was like, yep, I'm signing up. That's it. Mm. So 
I signed up on the website. I did my basics to motorsport test. I did my health and safety. And then it was just a matter of waiting for any events to come up. Mm. And that was November of last year. And March just gone. I had gone over to England and I did a track day with them. And the CEO is also one of the driving instructors. He's got like 30 years of experience. Mm. So he was driving around with me in the car and we went to Cadwell Park Mm. and he told me it's meant to be one of the more difficult tracks to do. I loved it so much you could not wipe the smile off my face. Mm. And in that moment I was like this, this is what I want to do. Yeah. It's an expensive sport, it's one of the most expensive sports, but this is what I want to do. Yeah. And 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 you I want to get into the whole uh, travel and the experience as well because I've seen in Instagram and posting stories and stuff like that as well. But you have a, a Patreon right now um, that I will leave in the link as well. And and so um, so anybody listening, um, please just go, because as you just heard Hannah saying, that it is one of the toughest kind of sports to kind of fund yourself in. And so, um, so if you want to go over to that and help her out, um, how how much is the kind of the Patreons and stuff like that as well? Do you know? There's different tiers. Like right. there, it goes from three euro to just support, yeah. um, to the more expensive tiers where you get back behind the scenes, you get exclusive pictures, um, you know, you, you get like an insight onto what's coming up. Yeah. So it it just depends on on yourself on how much you really want to know yeah. um, about the experience but other than that I mean it's, it's if, if you're mad into your cars and you want to see up and coming um, um, was it a girl racer would it be yeah a woman racer There's a lot of stigma a, around a it, woman yeah. a woman <laughs> racer um, yeah listen I'm pretty sure people that listen to this you go out and get your meal deals and all you do when you're bored and that's like 4 or 5 euro so I'm pretty sure you don't mind giving 3 euro a month to Hannah's Patreon um, so get up off your arse there or go to Tesco's now if you're walking or whatever you go and just sign up online um, to um, onto the Patreon anyway so yeah um, so I want to get into the journey of you travelling and getting to know people and if you want you can name people and you can and so like that as well because I think it's very interesting and uh, as I said before we even started this podcast I think it was um, that I, I really admire people with yeah, passion and so so tell me when you when you got either the email or whatever to say right you're allowed to go here explain the feelings that you had and then the journey that took you there so when i initially got the email i screamed <laughs> right <laughs> it was just ah! and my mom was like oh my god what's happening what's flying and i was like i just got accepted oh i paid the thingy and now i can do motorsport and she was like Yay! But she was kind of confused. She, was like, she yeah. didn't even know I was going to sign up. And she's yeah. like, what? Okay. <laughs> and I told my dad, who was very much, you know, into cars. Mm. And most people I know from that kind of generation love cars, mm. but never had the opportunities. Like, yeah. my parents being from Romania and moved here in the 1990s, you know, it was difficult for them as it was. Yeah. But I kind of saw my dad kind of be proud but he was kind of like, but isn't that for boys? Right. And I was like, no, this yeah. can be for girls too. Yeah. Like he's very, he was very in that mindset. Yeah. But that's more, just that generation anyway. Yeah, so you can't, you can't blame and you can't feel like it's oh, not his yeah. fault. No, it's not. It's the way it's uh, upbringing and the way the generation goes. Yeah, so. It was very men do work on cars and outside females mm. work inside the house and do the cleaning. Oh, it's, it's unfortunate. Changed. It's changed oh. now. <laughs> I'm sure Nicola makes I, you clean. Oh, come here, I'll be in the kitchen now, whacking up everything and then she'll be outside with a car or something. Yeah. So it's all opposite now. Um, but he, he noticed, you know, I really do want to do this. And he got to the point where he was very supportive. And he's joined me on my trip uh, back in March. He came oh. with me. Oh, lovely. Um, and he's seen me on the track and he took pictures. And he was kind of learning about the track as we went. Nice. But he was very supportive afterwards. And he was like, oh, when's the next one? Oh, when's the next one? Mm. Um, and then well, I went on the boot tour with Formula Woman there a couple of weeks ago in 
July, I think it was. Mm. Yeah, it was in July. It was three three days, three nights. Um, I met a fabulous group of women. Mm. Oh my God, they're just amazing. And it's mm. all age ranges, all countries. Like I've met girls from the Netherlands, from America, mostly from UK, but there's there's Jody from from um Scotland. Mm. So she was last year's winner. Yeah. And it's just amazing to meet so many women who have a passion for it, the same as you. Yeah. And on the boot tour, we got to drive cars on the track. We got to do some sponsorship talks. We got to do, you know, the mindset you need to have for race. And we did sim training. We did karting. Like, it just, you make so many friends from Mm. it. Like, even just three days and three nights. But I have girls that I'd be texting on Instagram saying, oh, can we just go karting? Or um, Mm. do do you want to meet up? here like when's the next track day we can all just come from all the respective countries and just meet up yeah like it's just fabulous yeah no i I, i've seen that there was a video of someone recording and you each had to go you had to go around a table and you had to introduce yourself where you're from and then i was like oh and then you were at the back hi my name is hannah and i was like (laughs) god hannah like yeah deadly um but yeah um Tell me about the the bonds that you created. Like, uh, is there any kind of plan to meet up with these people? There's someone in Scotland. Scotland's what, not even an hour away on a plane and stuff like that as well. So, is there any anybody that is kind of taking on that and saying, "Oh yeah, we should actually meet up, get them to come over here to go to Mondello or something, just go around the racetrack there." I'm pretty sure in the UK or Scotland, there's even more. Out oh, there. UK has loads of tracks yeah. compared to us. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, they're wonderful tracks though but um we actually went beside silverstone mm. on the boot tour and i was like no we're so close yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but there is a few talks of a few of the girls um once assessments are over and everything's kind of sorted and we know what's what mm. we might be doing a couple of track days in a few of the countries yeah it's not set in stone so i don't want to rat anybody yeah, out yeah, yeah. but uh we might be meeting up for a few few drinks maybe one of the days who nice, knows nice. <laughs> yeah now um so from that experience um in july what is the next step then do you get uh do you get notified for when the next kind of thing like that happens like what's what's next after that now so that was just basically training if you wanted to do it you could do it it was more an opportunity rather than anything mandatory hmm. so assessments are actually at the end of november so i've got to do all my practice before november that's not easy because mm. here in Mondello, you have to pay for your own track days, mm. which can, they're pretty cheap for what they are, but they can get fairly expensive if you want to get a lot of practice in. Mm. Um, so I'm actually planning on doing a couple of track days in Mondello just for myself for practice. Yeah. Um, simulator trainer training, again, it's very expensive to get the equipment. Yeah. It's yeah. like a couple of grand to get the, the stuff. So that's not really an option. Um, but maybe possibly a track day and I might be doing an event. Yeah. Maybe that might come out soon enough, but I was planning on doing a track day, but getting friends and family to come up and see yeah. um, what I'm like on the track and see if they want to invest. So oh, to lovely. That I think that because it, it's actually good that you said that because I wanted to get into the whole how to get people involved in this with funlets and stuff like that as well. And, you know, um, with the likes of social media, how much does that help yourself or other people like yourself? Like, it's what is the best kind of app to use to kind of get yourself? Because I know TikTok right now is kind of the biggest, biggest one. So, um, there'll be a lot of uh, hashtags to um, <laughs> raise on it. So, um, but yeah, just let tell us about that. Like, what, what do you do to kind of a lot of my time there? goes into social media at the moment? Like, I have a full time job, yeah. I have to pay the bills. So motorsport is kind of put on on the side mm. sometimes because mm. I, I genuinely, like I have a full-time job, I have to concentrate on my full-time job to pay the bills. Yes. If there's anything left over, great, gets to go to motorsport. Yeah. Um, but I've said it before, I'll say it again, and anybody you know in motorsport will always tell you, motorsport is one of the most expensive sports. Mm. Like you've got to think about the cars, the tracks, the wheels, the rims, the mm. everything, yeah. like fuel. Yeah. <laughs> not even gonna talk about yeah, it yeah yeah, yeah 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 um, <laughs> i was actually gonna ask you what do you think of the prices going up <laughs> they've gone back down oh okay? lovely so I'm, I'm happy about that yeah but um social media is basically where i'm getting my outreach so i'm posting up 
either be on my Patreon with b- behind the scenes or I'm posting up on Instagram if there's something coming up like I did today that I was doing the podcast with you. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple more events coming up that I'll be posting up. Um, I'm trying to get hip with the kids and hip do the, the, kids. the TikTok, yeah. but I'm I'm not very good at, at TikTok. I'm yeah. not very good at editing videos. Right. So I've, I've been trying. Yeah. Whether that's working or not, I don't know. You'd have to tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, um, I, I only learned recently if you get a bunch of video clips and put them together, TikTok syncs the sound for you and it, 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 it literally goes on beat. If you don't know how to do it, I'll show you afterwards because it's it's if you don't know how to do it. But I only learned that recently, so I was like, yes. One dinosaur like, teaching go, another yeah, dinosaur. I was like, yes. <laughs> like that. Um, but yeah, um, so now that you're kind of away from that event there and you're kind of coming back into i wouldn't say reality but in 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 the likes of where you are and your surroundings and so um is there any events coming up now that people could go out and watch not necessarily watch but there's the heat wave motor show coming up on the 28th right. of august yeah and then there's Drift Games, big massive event, the LZ Festival on the 3rd and 4th or 4th. And where, where it is located? So Heatwave is in the NACE race course. Right. Um, and then the Drift Games one is in Mondello Park. Okay, okay. I, I've never been to Mondello. Um, oh, here's a good thing to say actually to you. Um, I went to do my theory test. I'm 27 now, Hannah, right? I was, yeah, I was probably what? I was probably 22, 23 when I first met you. So I'm 27 now, right? So I'm getting to the age. Time flies. Yeah, time flies, right? When you're, yeah, right? Um, so I went to do my theory test and I didn't practice it and I failed by two. I practiced it and I failed by two. So I know, yeah, I know. Um, So I have to now practice even a bit more and try to go back and do yoke. But one of my friends recently just got his... Um, driver's license and are you terrified to be honest he's good but he's it's not safe he doesn't he's not really safe like I'll be in the back with the old Jesus handle or the old Jesus <laughs> handle that's what I call it I hold on to it and when you turn the corner you go oh Jesus like that's that's what you do so he he kind of comes to like he would speed down like a road um, an, a normal fucking state road at bleeding 60 right and he just flat down and I'm there just fucking in the back just holding on to the, the handle right and when he's turning corners um, he doesn't slow down he kind of like a roundabout or so he doesn't slow down a little bit and just fucking and he's like oh jeez like that's what the handle is there for right so I'm kind of scared to get in the car with him <laughs> I really am and I know for a fact if I got in the car with yourself or I got in the car with um, Nicholas brother Nicholas brother does the same type of stuff as, uh, as yourself um, not to the extreme, I don't think he just does the meetups and so. Um, but um, yeah, I don't think I'd do well in a car. Like I don't think I'll do well in a Mondello track because I would sit there in the seat with me face back and the G's force hit me, going, "I don't like this. I don't like it." But it's strange because I like roller coasters. I love roller coasters. I love the speed that roller coasters go. I think it's just. I don't roller know. coasters are worse because they can put you upside down. Yeah. The only time you're going to be upside down in a car is if you crash or roll <laughs> over. <laughs> a few times you can go upside down in a car if you crash. Yeah, no, you'll end up upside down as well and you just stay there and you're just looking for help pleading. But you know what? Hopefully none of that happens. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wanted, I wanted to get into that as well now. Um, with the likes of the scene of, uh, of the cars and so, is there a lot of um, accidents in, in that kind of... Um, industry or that t- type of way yes and no right there has been a few accidents that i know of yeah Um, some of them are very very dangerous but it's just a matter of knowing your own limits yeah like don't push yourself if you know you can't spin the car don't do it yeah Um, don't do it around poles because poles are very car attractive yeah it'll wrap <laughs> around the pole as they say yeah um and just always be careful of your surroundings. Like, don't get me wrong, it's fun. Um, I'm sure adrenaline kicks in, but just mm. you have to be aware of your surroundings yeah. because there's other people on the road as well. Mm. And, you know, there could be people on the sidelines and stuff like that. So you just need to be careful that no one gets injured. Mm. Don't get me wrong, I'm I'm all for, for fun and games. Like, mm. I love watching it as well, but I just think 
Like it's not a big percentage, just a very small percentage of people, but it's just good to be careful. Right. Okay. Well, there you go. That's a bit of advice for Hannah. Um, so, right, so we're going to get into some questions now. You said you have some questions there. So if we want to kind of get the phone or so, don't worry, Hannah, this is a podcast. I can cut this. It's all good. Don't worry. I love the way you're so comfortable. Yes. How to get started in motorsport. Right, so... To get your foot in the door. Right, so um, one question to ask, how to get started in motorsport? How to get your foot in the door? So for yourself, what would that be like? For me, I think it was not easy, but a little bit easier, like a step easier because I had the whole Formula Woman thing and I was able to sign up and be like, look, I'm interested in this. And then they kind of organize events and stuff like that. So they'd organize track days and stuff like that for you. But one of the main things I'd say is you're not going to get sponsors unless you've got track time. So you could be the best road driver in the world. Mm. That will mean absolutely nothing to them. Yeah. You need to be able to prove, whether it's through karting or track days, that you can drive around a track and that you're worth investing in. Mm. So, I mean, that's all I can really say. Like To get your foot in the door, it's talking to the right people, knowing the right people. And, and kind of showing your interest and your passion and proving your interest and your passion through track time. Right. Um, and with the likes of sponsors and so like that as well, uh, before we go into another question there, um, sponsors for yourself, do you have any sponsors at the moment? I have a few. I do have No Lemon A few? Cars. I mean... Wow. It's not a few as in they're all giving me money. Like... Oh, yeah. I'm very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Like there, there's different types of sponsorships. There's there's financial sponsorship, which is mainly just money, money, money. Yeah. There's the in kind sponsorships that they give you something in return of your promotion. Like you say they sponsor you and they give you stuff. Yeah. That you Would that be like putting stickers in your car and stuff like stickers that? Stickers or products or stuff like that. So they'll they'll kind of return the favor, so to speak. So you're giving them advertisement and mm. they're giving you stuff that yeah. you can use that are are useful for you. Yeah. Um, and like other places might just do uh, promotion and advertising for you. So they'll just be like, yeah, you advertise us, we'll advertise you. Mm. Simple as. Like there, there's n- just because I have a lot of sponsors doesn't mean I'm getting money, Anthony. Yeah, Trust yeah, me, yeah. I'm just as poor as I was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I have No Lemons Cars that are sponsoring me. Major- like they're the, the bigger sponsor. Um, I actually bought my car from them. And if anybody's looking for a car, you know. Mm. They've got some really nice cars in. They're actually getting a few more GT86s if anybody's looking for them. Radio. Um, It's a really nice car to drive. I don't know what that is, but it's uh, okay. Yeah, I'd I'd recommend. I'd recommend. (laughs) Yeah, it looks Looks nice. Yeah, it looks nice and really Um, nice. I've got Murray Motorsport that are giving me discounts if I need any racing gear. Hmm. Um, JLD Auto Care. They're doing car products, car cleaning products. Um, We've got a few more companies doing hoodies and stuff like Hmm. that and stickers. Um, so a few more stuff is coming through the pipelines they're not completely confirmed yet but yeah. it's just a matter of, of going in and talking to the right people right yeah okay so don't be afraid to go out the worst thing they can say is no yeah you know and that, I mean? that's like the worst of it like best thing possible they say yeah let's go yeah. Um, the the worst possible outcome is just like no I what I witnessed right What I, from my experience as well if you want to go and start your own thing or your own business um you there will be a lot of rejection you 90 percent of the time it's rejection and you need to learn to hear that word now as well you have to have thick skin yeah you really do if you are not a type of person that doesn't take criticism very well or you know that you know has been handed everything to you since a young age and you're into this new world and that you think you're gonna make it straight away f- trust me from someone that's been making films uh, myself for a while it's only starting off now for people kind of in the same industry as myself. It'd be the same for you in the car industry, for the film industry in Ireland. I'm only starting to get a bit there now myself, and I'm doing this since 2012. So blood, yeah, me, sweat, and tears. Blood, me. sweat, and tears. Lot of tears. Lot of tears. Lot of tears. Um, but yeah, no. Um, trust me. Just keep going along with it. Um, even when it feels like it's not. What I found with sponsors is once you get the first one, the rest of them get easier. Yeah. So it's just getting your foot in the door, basically. It's then. literally just the first person who believes in you enough yeah. that they say, yes, you can do this. Mm. It's like your confidence shoots up and you're like, yeah, I can do this. Like yeah. you believed in yourself yeah. before. If someone else can see it. Yeah, yeah. but once you kind of get someone else approving it, you're kind of like, yeah. 
like, like as <laughs> as 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 people as humans we we would we respond to it. we crave um not attention but we crave that uh, kind of approval. Um, approval um it's very easy for a person to uh, accept accept negativity faster um do you get me then it would be you know because someone could give you a compliment you're like no nah, what's up nah it's just penny. Yeah, it's eyes ah, all right. Like that as well, yeah. But I sounded like an old woman there, like, hi, my name's Flo. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> but right, get back in for there. So do we have uh, another question there? The other one was about my car. Right. So I mean, what what did that person say, Bonnie Chance? Remember, I can chop and do, change this Do you stuff. like your car? Do you like your new car? Do you like your new car? Like, yeah, that's why I bought it. Yeah. What, <laughs> what do you think? Going back, yeah. But um, if anybody else wants to see my car, it's actually going to be in the shows in Nace Racecourse and the Mondello one with Drift Games. Nice. So it's been accepted as a show car for both of them. Oh, so if you want to see my car or talk to me, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. So, so literally, like it is, it's it's basically as we were talking about earlier. It's all social media. How you get there is that you like. I'll be asking you to send me every bit of link, every link, and then it'll be down in the description below. Um, obviously this will be on YouTube as well, but this will be like you know an audio, I'm sorry that as well, yeah. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, right? And then um, it will be also um, you know I don't think TikTok takes all this, so there's not enough of that now. But um, maybe you'll see a dance. Maybe we'll do a TikTok. Or something. Oh my God! Can we do one of those popular TikToks? I will. I will. Yeah. So if you go on, if you want to see me and Hannah doing a TikTok on her TikTok page. Um, we're we're going to uh yeah we'll we'll put it down the link below we'll see what happens so you're gonna make have to it check go it. viral yeah make it go viral there or something right so um but I don't know how long we are actually going for there's uh, another question if you want oh was there just one more okay yeah so we'll go for one more question then we'll we'll have to wrap up now will VRT ever be getting rid of now what's VRT so VRT is basically if you bring in a car from a foreign country so my car is imported from Japan. Okay. So I had to get it VRT'd basically to say, yes, this is That's more bloody money. It's so expensive. Yeah. It's ten percent of the value of a car. Yeah. Um but from what I've heard about VRT, basically we're not supposed to be charged VRT. Right. Like anybody correct me if I'm wrong. Like this is just information I've heard. But it's not supposed to be charged because of something with the European Union. Right. But Ireland actually makes so much money from it that they just pay off the fine. People that run this country are just money grabbers. So just correct me if I'm wrong, if that's not the reason we still have VRT, fine, great, well, well done. But I mean, I, that's what I was told. Yeah. Um, but VRT for my car was was quite expensive. It was 10% of the value of the car and the value is like 20K. Yay. So <laughs> um, a lot of the times you'll see people don't want to import their cars because of VRT. Yeah. And... It, it, it is a dampener because you, you won't get like the Irish cars are all well and good but yeah. they don't have a lot of options Yeah. Um, whereas the UK would have a lot nicer cars and they'd have more options on the inside like heated seats for example I know that's a very bad example yeah. but they a lot of their cars would be better and their their road tax is actually a lot cheaper than ours oh, right, right. so the, the car scene in England is actually a lot bigger hmm. because they can modify their cars yeah, yeah. and their insurance does provide them and would, for would it. you would you consider moving i thought about it because if if you're so passionate about this you know it's 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 only a matter of time before you know you go right if i need to excel more in this place and ireland's only offering me this much i need to do make that next step like i know it's a lot and it's a lot of especially as you were saying it's a lot of money to kind of do uh what you're doing but also to try to live over there as well is is a different thing so I thought about it, but then I was like, no, I'd have to re-register my car. <laughs> yeah. It's too expensive I'd to bring my car over with me, so no. Yeah, right. Maybe in the future, like, you never know, like, oh, yeah, never course, say never, course. but I've thought about it a few times to move out of Ireland yeah. for that reason. Yeah. Just, there, there's not many opportunities. Like, most young people know, it's so difficult to get it's, on the housing list. Yeah. To get, like, a proper paying job. It's just... It's, it's yeah, Ireland is not the place that it, used, it once was. Um, a lot of uh, 
the young people generation. don't have the opportunities. No, we that don't. That's to. why a lot of people are emigrating right now um, and, and going um, to different countries that because there's better opportunities, it's cheaper as well. I was thinking to try to lift my, like, you know, trying to get my film career or whatever to go to London, like, because every Irish person goes, where are you going to go? London. I'm going to go to London. Um, and they go there. And I know a few people that went there and they have so, they're being on so much TV shows now and they're getting a lot of opportunities. They're getting paid jobs. You get me so. Um, I have a degree in cinematography now um, well for media production, thank you. And um, so so i I been trying to do that here. I applied for BBC Apprentice and I got to the very last stage. And I didn't tell anybody this, but I got to the last stage and um, I just I just didn't get through to the last stage, but it was I was going to go up to Belfast for a year and they pay for you to stay there and stuff. I, I, you know I mean, you, you have to make them sacrifices to, to do that and and so so um, it's always the young people that have to sacrifice for their dreams though yeah and a lot of the time the sacrifice is so big that we're just like why bother yeah like there's a lot of people I know a few people now that um they they accept that nine to five that um okay maybe this isn't realistic but anything that you want to do especially if you're standing up your own business or anything like that you need to get that mindset out of your head like like there's a lot of people like in the acting world itself um you know the the guy that played Snape. He didn't make it till he was fifty. Um, it's never too late for your dream to come no, true. No, not at all. Um, um, Morgan Freeman didn't make it till he was sixty. Do you get me? Around 60, 50, 60. He didn't look it. Did not a chance. Still doesn't. <laughs> he has the fountain of youth. He is God from Bruce Almighty. He actually is. Um, radio. So I realised that we are going over time now. Um, and the likes of that. So, um, yeah. I just want to say thanks very much for coming on. Thank you um, for inviting me on. Yeah, no problem. Um. I'd love for you to come back on when you know you have there's more stuff that has been done and that we can talk about all of that as well. Um, if you want to check out Hannah's socials, they'll all be in the link in the description. Um, yeah, I don't know who I'm getting on next or what I'm gonna do. I have to get into this properly. Um, I keep going back and forth, but you know that guy's already. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for uh, listening to another episode of podcast. And I remember, is that the best podcast? It's not the worst podcast. It's just... The Alright Podcast. Deadly. I like when people do the outro. Uh, and yeah, guys, uh, Hannah's, um, you know, Patreon and stuff is down below as well. So all the links there if you want to go check it out. Get to know her as well and see what she's about also. You've learned a lot here, but you can learn a lot over there as well. So guys, thanks for watching. Um,